And they would flip to a video where it's like... Each deadlift begins with the barbell on the ground and finishes when the athlete stands up the weight the full extension of the knees and hips. This is the movement standard. This is the flow of the workout. Here's someone doing it. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can only do this. You can only do that. Any repetition that is bounced will not count. If the athlete fails to extend their hips at the top of the repetition, these reps will not count. If the athlete does not lock out their knees at the top, those reps will not count. During every Yo, Andrew Hiller just finished up the workout. You know, I was doing my typical answering of messages. And the best thing about all the stuff that I've got going on here is that you guys are responding to me quite a bit. You're giving me a lot of feedback. It's all really good. I'm talking to you guys a little bit, getting to know a couple of you. And you're sending me stuff that I can talk about. So it's keeping this thing rolling. Today, what we're going to talk about is Tia Toomey, who put up her video of 22.2. Being the way that I am, I've always wanted to do as well as I could do in the open workouts. The incentive was that you would place high in the open. Back in the day, you'd go to the regional based on your open performance. More recently, you would go to a semifinal, maybe even qualify for the games. This year, there's no point to doing really well in the open. I'm not a big fan. I get a big push. I don't have a push to do as well as I can. This workout suffered. My training leading up to it suffered. That's a topic for another day. But what I do want to address, because you know, if the open's not important to the people who are really trying to push the envelope, it is still important for the everyday person. And I'm not trying to say don't try in the open because it will still be the indicator of your fitness level. However, the top of the chain, like the I don't know, Patrick Vellander's, the Justin Medeiros, the Katrin David's daughters of the world, there's no incentive for them to do well. They still do well because they're the best. But they no longer hide their scores. They populate the leaderboard early. That's not something that ever used to be done when these things meant something. To go along with that, these people are also now posting their videos. And I remember back in the day, it was hush hush. Like there was a member of mine at the gym who had gone overseas to another gym, had been to one of these gyms where one of these people was a top fiver at the games. And this individual said, hey, you can be in the gym now, but if you see my score, you're not allowed to say shit about my score. Almost like I like to communicate you. I'm going to send a hitman after you and take your head off if you tell somebody my score somewhere. I don't want them to know. And these days, these athletes are just putting their videos on the internet so they can get views and make money. Now, rewind a couple years and there's me on the internet looking for everything of every sort of touch I can get to see what's going on. See how I can improve myself. See, I can apply this person's and this person's. I can give to my athletes. I can do it myself to improve my score. I understand it's the name of the game. You also have to understand that this is coming from CrossFit Inc. With that, I'm seeing all this bunch of crap. I'm seeing terrible burpees. I'm seeing terrible deadlifts. I'm seeing just standards that are not upheld anywhere. I don't want to beat the dead horse saying, oh, I've been punished in the past because I have. Now, it always starts at the top. And when these people are putting out the content where everyone's going to be looking at it, you see these videos with hundreds of thousands of views. There's only, what, 200,000 people signed up for the Open. So if there's 150,000 views on, on this video, you can assume that maybe half of the people signed up for the Open have seen this video. And when these people see this video and they see this athlete getting away with this crap, why wouldn't they do it? And if they can get away with this as an elite athlete, like what's to stop somebody from getting away with something even worse? I've seen people wearing gymnastics grips and it says specifically in the rules, don't wear gymnastics grips. But because the names out there are getting away with some crap, why wouldn't you try to get away with it? a little bit of something something i think it's a whole bunch of bullshit and i think it's all crossfit's fault they're not doing what's important so what i have here is i have a video from 16.4 where back then they would say here's the workout they announced it at the crossfit announcement where dave castro would come out with this thing and say the workout is 16.4 is a chipper The first movement in the chipper is the deadlift. And then he would say the workout, everyone would have their immediate reaction, and then they would flip to a video where it's like... Each deadlift begins with a barbell on the ground and finishes when the athlete stands up for weight the full extension of the knees and hips. This is the movement standard. This is the flow of the workout. Here's someone doing it. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can only do this. You can only do that. Any repetition that is bounced will not count. If the athlete fails to extend their hips at the top of the repetition, these reps will not count. If the athlete does not lock out their knees at the top, those reps will not count. 
So on the 22.2 and 22.1 announcements, and even afterwards, there's no video with an Adrian Bosman or a Sean Woodland or a Pat Sherwood saying, these are the things that you can do. Brooke Ens isn't demoing, Nicole Caro's not saying anything, and these are all things that would happen in the past. I believe these are the things that would circumvent the crap that you're seeing. That tied along with the fact that there is no incentive to hide your video. So maybe this has been going on a little longer than I thought, but you really don't see it. Maybe CrossFit's been hush-hushing this forever. And if Catherine is doing those burpees on somewhere else that I posted the other day, they're just not going to say anything. But now they're on the internet because these people make... I don't know, five bucks per thousand views. So if they're going to put up a video that's 100,000 views, they make 500 bucks. Why wouldn't they do it? That along with their sponsorship deals. Where it's like, we are now Monster. Monster Inc. and CrossFit Monsters and Corp. on the TV and the movie. <laughs> Brings me to what probably made you want to watch this video is Tia Toomey, where she probably did uh, 200 reps, 100 of which, in my opinion, maybe don't count. Maybe don't count. Why do I say maybe? I say maybe because I guess it says in the thing that the, 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 the movement standards that CrossFit did give us, the bar has to start on the ground. That's a barbell starting on the ground right there, you know. I didn't clean it up. It's on the ground. That's how it starts. You're going to see that Tia, what does a bar look like starting on the ground? Like that. Does it levitate on one side? It, it, it's not levitating to me. You know who's watching that? Shane Orr, the great and mighty Shane Orr who produced this motherfucker. You think that he thinks that that or this is starting on the ground? Why is he saying anything? Does she kill him? Like, don't you dare talk to me, Shane. All right, well, I understand that. <laughs> you look over to the side. Brooke Wells, Little Miss, shows the capacity. Handstand push-ups. Video shot from way the hell back there. Shot on a freaking potato in the year 2016 where there's handstand push-ups. You're like, is her heels getting over the line? Doesn't matter. It's Brooke Wells. She has the capacity. Does Tia have the capacity? Yeah. Because she won the games five times in a row with judges, different judges, every single year. No problem. She finished second the two years before that. You look behind Tia. You see somebody. I don't know who it is. They know they got a bunch of games athletes there. So you can assume it might be a high-level athlete who's doing one of these. They, they, they say your hips have to be extended from the side profile. Are, are, are my hips extended? I don't know. I've been in trouble for that one before. Oh, yeah. I've been in trouble in live competition for not extending my hips. I know what that's like. I know what that looks like. To her right. I don't know who that is either, but she looks like a high-level female. And that high-level female doesn't look like she's touching her chest to the floor on a lot of her burpees. <clears throat> and I know that I'm not the only one who feels this way. And I know that it also doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what you think! But you know what? It matters. It matters a lot to a lot of people. And yes, this stuff's been going on forever. But there used to be five weeks of the Open. And through those five weeks, I think that uh, maybe one time something would happen. And, w you know, if it would happen, I would say three quarters of that times, those times, it would be cut in the butt. Like Josh Bridges got a major penalty on a workout. Almost took him out of regionals. Josh Bridges, one of the greatest guys of all time in the CrossFit field. He won the 16.4. And then they took it away from him, gave it to Rich Froning. Why? Because Rich Froning didn't use a fisheye lens on his freaking video. The difference between Josh Bridges and Brooke Wells? Uh, <laughs> Got to make sure that I show you the video of uh, Tia Toomey here doing her deadlifts. Got to make sure I showed, showed you the 16.4 video. Where... At the call of 3, 2, 1, go, the athlete may grab the bar and begin their deadlifts. Each deadlift begins with the barbell on the ground and finishes when the athlete stands up the weight to full extension of the knees and hips, with their shoulders behind the bar at the top of the movement. The athlete may choose any grip they like, but their feet must be inside their hands. No sumo stances are permitted. Once the athlete has achieved lockout, they may drop the barbell from the top. Any repetition that is bounced will not count. If the athlete fails to extend their hips at the top of the repetition, these reps will not count. If the athlete does not lock out their knees at the top, those reps will not count. That's the only thing that we've had recently where it's going over a deadlift standard. It's not the only thing recently, but it's one of the best ones that I could find where it's briefing a open workout that was held to a high standard and then enforced on somebody like a Josh Bridges. 
So before you come in and cut my head off and say, stop picking on these girls, Tia Toomey, oh, you just don't like that it's Australia and you're an American. I, I don't really care about the American pride thing. I mean, yeah, it's cool to be in America. It's one of the best countries in the freaking world. But I'm not over here saying Rich Froning is the best CrossFitter in the world. And yes, America. America's great. Not going to say it's not great, but I also love Patrick Vellner and he's from Canada. Like, go Patrick Vellner. Never had an issue with a Patrick Vellner mover standard. Never had an issue with a Patrick Vellner way of life. This is just these people, the way they go about things and the way that they're, you know, rubbing the standard the wrong way. That's an actual comment that I had, by the way. Katrin, you know, you just don't like that she's the best in freaking Iceland and the girls in America suck. I don't care. I wish they were better, sure. But what I do want you to take away is that I and I can keep on going after it forever and ever, is that I wish that CrossFit was doing what it would do forever and say, hey, you can do this, you can't do this. You didn't do this, you're in trouble. I don't care if you won the CrossFit Games. I'm going to take your feet out from underneath you if you don't do it right. CrossFit was forging elite fitness. They would bring in all of these certain mindsets, the David Goggins of the world, the army, the military, people who would work really hard. Now they're like reaching out and saying, oh, come aboard and, you know, inclusivity is key and I don't disagree with that like I wish everybody would do CrossFit but I wish they would do it the way that it was like what was so bad about it was it too scary I don't think it was too scary I had all these people who would be at my gym back in the day and they all loved it like everyone stayed I would even have the first workout of the week be like your I would even have the first workout of your elements be 21159 of wall balls and assault bike calories I even leveled it up to 27 21159 of wall balls and burpees and you know what it was my way of filtering out the people who I knew wouldn't stick around anyway. Not a good business model, I agree. That is unless you th take into account the fact that if they did stay and like you did, okay, we're gonna show you how to squat, you know what? That's just deep enough and they're doing quarter squats. Then they stay and they give you a hard time forever. So CrossFit Inc, in my opinion, is saying, okay, those deadlifts are good enough. Uh, yeah, I don't care if it's touching at the same time on each side. Uh, you know what, those burpees? They're close, like they're kind of two foot takeoff, two foot landing. Uh, you know what? Get rid of that standard. Screw that. Now I'm giving you a hard time. I'm giving you a hard time. And there's going to be a bunch of other people out there who are getting away with it. And it's going to make your life hell. They're going to, you know, rise up. They're going to bring you a new standard and a new standard because you're not standing your ground. You're not doing freaking anything to stand up for yourself. You're just letting it slide. Hey, everybody love everybody. And what does the LE stand for? Everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. Right there up on the wall. And keep on going. Tia Toomey, you're the best in the world. What do you want to do? What should we do? Oh, you can get away with that? Okay. The new standard on the deadlifts is, you know, at some point in time, one side of the bar has to touch the ground. And then, you know, at the top, all these people aren't extending their hips. So uh, as long as it goes up and down like three inches, this is the, the bar path. And like, as long as they do something sometime at some point with that weight, you know what? 225, 155, you thought that was too heavy? You're under 150 pounds? Okay, if you're under 150 pounds, you get to use a different weight. You're over 225 pounds? That's too many burpees? You can't do 100 burpees? Okay, your rep scheme is always do five. I don't know, don't, don't ever do any more than five. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, 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 four, three, two, one. Does that make sense? That's where it's going. They're just going to let you do whatever the hell you want whenever you want to do it. And it just keeps on making me more mad. And I know I'm not the only one because you guys keep on sending me messages about, oh, you're mad too. What do you think? Comment, like, subscribe, and rather, bye.